Happy Sunday here in Maryland. I am Callie Francois, and of course, and with Tim Tullick this morning. He's going to be with us here all day. Tim, I saw you at the races yesterday. We had an interesting day yesterday. Jaime Rodriguez with five wins, and then we had a bound of prices, a $12 winner, a $12.40 winner, a $36.40 winner, and a $16.60 winner, Tim. Yeah, and with all that, the highlight of the day was Karen's notion in that yes. open allowance race. Oh, what a what a good story that is. Nancy Heil, breeder, owner, Karen's notion coming up with that big win in that allowance race and that was a lot of fun that was super fun to see and Tim we always talk about Karen's notion about sitting behind the pace a little bit always getting sent got the right kind of trip yesterday but taking a look at the track right now still have had a little bit of moisture in the air that's come down onto the track so the track is rated good today 41 degrees went not too windy luckily for the horses and riders out there today. But let's take a look at this first race that starts this nice little card that we have here on Sunday. This claiming 12-5, going six furlongs on the dirt for the two-year-olds. Tim, we're going to take a look right away at both of our shared top selection, a trep ad for Jamie Ness. Jaime Rodriguez looking to start off the day with a winner. Yeah, and this horse is coming first off the claim for Jamie Ness. This horse was claimed right here at Keeneland on this particular day. This was a maiden 20. He gets the lead, swaps his lead a little late, but draws off from this group now all looks good from here anytime you're first off the claim from Jamie for Jamie uh, all those uh, stats work this was a good solid number that he runs here today that's all the good news but here comes the question drops off the claim the maiden 20 to the open 12-5 look it's a move I like you break you break your maiden you're probably worth half of what you break your maiden for however yes. Did not see a work until two days ago. Ran on October 23rd. Did not see a work until two days ago. An easy, easy half mile up there at Parks. I'm going to trust Jamie here. He's 27% off this type of layup. But there's certainly questions uh, to be asked here uh, with uh, Trapat and uh, Jamie Rodriguez. You also have the number four underneath three, the spec for Dale Capuano. It's Carlos Lopez again today. Didn't have the best uh, trips coming around the turn in that last time up, but cuts back in distance today. Yeah, cuts back in distance. Already a winner at this level, at this uh, distance. He's dropping down in class, coming out of that uh, 20,000 where he ran behind Johnny French Fry, and Johnny French Fry ran pretty well uh, that day. So this should work for Reed the spec, and uh, he's certainly in line to pick up all the pieces if Tra uh, Trap Hat doesn't show up. Exactly. You you and I have also both include great days ahead. Ned Aller, Javian Toledo uh, should be probably getting a bit more of a forward trip today and also gets a track with moisture. Yeah, it's all it's going to all depend on how he gets away. He's run twice and not gotten away right. well in either one of those starts. He's getting a little relief in class here. Although once you get down to this kind of level of two-year-olds this time of year, there's just not a whole lot of them. They just keep exactly. bouncing back and forth. <laughs> exactly. So Tim Tall, it goes three, four, five, one. I go three, four, five, six in the first race. Race number two kicks off the early pick four, which of course, Tim, in replacement of Keith Fuse, still has an early pick four today. Tim, how do you play it today? Hey, look, race two, I go deep. A four, six, nine, and at 12 in race two. I think that race is wide open. Big field, 11 mm -hmm. horses uh, to kick off the early pick for race three. I go deep again. That's a maiden 12. They're not the trustworthiest of, <laughs> of, uh, of uh, contestants in uh, this uh, particular heat. Five, nine, uh, five, six, seven, nine. I start to uh, pair down a little bit. Race four, I use the three and the five Royal Crusader, my top pick in there for Anthony Ferrer. And I single on the eight, on the mark, second time starter for a Hammy Smith, $16 okay. ticket in the early pick four. I like that brave single in race number five, a $16 ticket. Let's start in race number two in this, as Tim mentioned, this claiming 10 never win three, six furlongs on the dirt. Let's take a look right away at your top selection, Flaming East on the outside post. This is for Thais Live. Lacey got at Thais Live. Pustina takes the call. Uh, might get a better chance being on the outside today. Well, I think there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, this uh, race was going seven eighths of a mile this particular day. This race is from October 8th of this past fall. This is the last time Flaming East ran three quarters of a mile on a fast main track, and this was for the two lifetime 25. Came back on a fast main track going a mile. That didn't work. Wanted no part of that. Came back in the 25 over the mud. Wanted no part of that. Gets back to a fast uh, main track uh, this afternoon, as you mentioned, has speed from the outside. Right. 
and uh, um, 67 buyer speed figure he ran that particular day. That right. that can win that this race today. 15 to 1 on the line, going to take a shot. Absolutely. I do like that because I had that horse on and off of my ticket, so I'm really glad that you went with that as your top selection. We both have interest in the number four race of spites for Anthony Ferrier. Carlos Lopez gets the call again on. Uh, this is second off the claim for Anthony Ferrier. Yeah, you have to uh, look at this horse for sure. Three to one on the line, winner of two in a row. Uh, just missed running a lifetime best figure in his most recent uh, race uh, while winning a 71. That's good enough uh, to win here. And Anthony's horses win two in a row about 28% of the time. Of course, of course. And you also go with Highland Dream. I had this horse on and off my ticket. So you're going you're going with the picks that I thought about going with. Uh, but Kieran McGee, Angel Cruz, uh, this is a good horse to be in the mix of it. Yeah, I mean, this horse was a little bit better in his most recent race. This will be third off the claim uh, for Kieran if he shows a little bit more improvement today. It puts him right in the conversation. I don't think he's too far off here, so I take a little shot there. Absolutely. Tim Tollett goes 12-4-6-9. I go 2-8-4-9 in that second, the start of the early pick. Let's talk about your two. Oh, we can talk about my yeah, two. Absolutely. Well, we're pit stop. Talk about your top pick. Pit let's stop. Go back to race two, kids. Let's go talk. Let's there go back go. to race two. Pit stop, man. We've got an. I was wrestling with this horse. Uh, with having, I was thinking of replacing the six for the nine. But the reason I went with pit stop, man, is that we're getting back on the dirt for this one. This one definitely appreciates that we have a bit of an outside post. We have J. Ron Barbosa. The horse just try. It was just a tried turf event last time out. Nonetheless, at the starter optional, so we get back to the pro. Appropriate uh, distance, distance surface, and level today. So I'm confused. Do you have the nine on top or the two on top? Sorry, we were talking about the two. But let's we talk about the nine. We just, I just talked hey, about the nine. One, Sorry. One two, in a, one, two in a row. Big, solid, good numbers. 67 to 65. They try him on the turf. Okay, he's burning great on the dirt, so let's try him on the turf. No good. Back on the main track today. There we go. Yes. And then, of course, the, I just chose the number two, all for love, Jerry Rob, Xavier Perez. Used to being in that inside position at the claiming six, not only at the claiming 16, but in the last four starts has been not on the rail, but just an inside post, can handle that type of pressure, can handle that kind of uh, s setup that he's going to be getting today, especially with the aforementioned speed on the outside that we just talked about. So, And then I also include the number eight, Lad Needs a Handler. This one is just a knocking on the door. And so in these types of races, especially at the claiming $10,000 level, I just want – I'm looking for a little bit of consistency. And lately – it land needs a handler back in the Tim Salzman barn and now over at John Salzman now, but that's where I see this horse just giving a little bit of consistency, especially on a track with a little bit of moisture today. He likes to run second, no doubt about that, but yeah. he is, he does show up every time he's let over. He does. Race number three is a maiden 12-5 going at the mile and 16th on the dirt. Tim, we both have the number five in our picks, but you have this horse on top, Ok Okigami for Phil Schoenthal. Angel Cruz, I like this. I like, uh, there's a lot of underneath the radar of what's going on yeah, here. I, I think so, and it's really hard to fall in love with anybody uh, in, in this spot, <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with O o Omakami for Phil Schoenthal. The distance should not be an issue. Bred to get a route of grounds, dropping in class, getting the blinkers on. You know I like that. Stretching out and getting on conventional dirt uh, for the first time. I expect this one to be well-placed coming on out of the gate. And uh, maybe he gets the lead. Maybe he doesn't. But he's going to be in a good spot in clean air with blinkers on. I like all of those things. And like I said, not being in love with anyone else in the race, I'm going to go with something different. Absolutely. Take a stab at it. At 10 to 1, I love that price play that you have going on today. We both have the number 9 uh, in our exacta. I have this one on top. You have him in your exacta. Then come morning for Carl Duran. William Humphrey uh, gets the call. They haven't gotten a win yet. William hasn't ridden a lot for Carl yet, but I liked what I saw last time out. Yeah, it was a good effort. Just got beat three quarters of length at this exact uh, distance goes stretches out to two turns for the first time this afternoon just kind of ground away down that long uh, yes. stretch the second wire here at Laurel Park is going to have to deal uh, with that outside draw you don't want to get hung too far out there right. as you hit that first turn right especially if you go back to that first start we did go five wide uh, it didn't Completely level. Let's talk about Rexton Rocks. Uh, for Brittany Russell, gets the blinkers on. For Javian Toledo, drops down to the 12. I tried the 40 a or 20 level a couple of weeks ago. A 17 length beat there, first time out, going a mile. Always a big ass to go around a ground, right. uh, even for a Brittany Russell runner. But drops in class, as you mentioned, does what I like adding blinkers. 
I, you just have to expect improvement here this you afternoon, do. right? You, I mean, that's the, just the bottom, bottom there's line. There's nowhere to go but up with this filly, quite frankly. And so I think the help uh, just – I think last time out I was talking with Brittany about this horse. The 20 looked a little bit better. It was double entered that weekend, and that field looked a little bit better. But there we have it, 17 length beat. So hopefully the blinkers on is going to help this filly today here. We both also have the six underneath. Why not? Bally Hay, Tim Keith, Jean Novello. Uh, much to be desired, but again, just talked about it. Nowhere to go but up. Yeah. Look, th this is a, a filly who actually ran okay in her first two starts. I mean, they're, they're not terrible beats, and she ran consistent. She just ran the same type of race uh, sprinting. If she can run that same kind of consistent pace over a mile of 16th, that right. puts her in the conversation. Golden Lad, 17% with his first-time routers. Race number four starts the Rainbow Pick 6. I've got a ticket lined up. It's not a particularly exciting ticket because I key in on one race, and that's race number six. Uh, I know our I have the nine on top. You have have the four on top, which I like, but there are a lot of horses that could potentially be showing up in there. I go again with Rockabout, you go with Frightland. Uh, that I feel like that race could go a bunch of different directions. Th directions, and then I just wanted to keep it a little bit simple. If I could have gone any wider in a couple of races, I would have gone wider in maybe perhaps race number five and maybe perhaps race number eight. But I'm gonna just keep it simple, keep it nice and tight, other than the race number six. So $38.40 ticket to get you going. It starts in this claiming $5,000 event, uh, which have never won four, a mile and 16th on the dirt. Let's go ahead and take a look at both of our shared top selection, Royal Crusader for Anthony Ferry against J. Ron Barbosa today. Yeah, it comes back at this level. We're going to look at his race. This is his last start at this level where he runs behind the next out winner in Muchacho uh, Macho, but mm -hmm. he runs a big race here. He comes up the inside. I don't know how the track was playing that particular day. I'd have to check with Keith. However, this is a good effort. He keeps uh, uh, getting it on down the wire. He, it's, there's no give up here. He just got outrun by a horse that would come out, come back, and win again. Exactly. And I'm looking at this horse where you can see there was a little bit of trepidation as far as him trying to go through that spot past that eight horse. And until that eight horse got a little bit wider, then he got a little bit more braver. Because remember, this is the $5,000 level. You're not going to sometimes, it, this is the kind of level where you find either really fun, brave, hor and hard knocking horses, or you find horses that just aren't brave at all. So I think that in itself was a nice improvement for the Anthony Ferrier trainee. Yeah, Barbosa, he'll be, he'll be looking for the lead. Absol very, very close. Absolutely. You also have Akati's Verb, who we both have underneath for Elvis Trujillo. Richard Monterey uh, got a key in on two back. Yeah, drops down below the level of the October uh, uh, claim. Came, comes back and runs a lifetime best in that starter at Delaware Park. Hooks a slop in the next uh, race. No good there. Now they drop uh, to the, the to the bottom. Clearly the one to beat if he's right. Looks like they right. might be trying to sell him and uh, move him on. So there's, there's some questions there for sure. But if he's right, they're probably all running for a second. Exactly. If he's right, you're going to key in on that race three back where he was on a track with moisture and did run well just in a more proper spot. Uh, that And that's the spot where Elvis did claim him. So kind of just digging, going back to those roots and getting, trying to get, uh, you know, this horse in a successful spot. Let's talk about Mama. I got this for Amy Cortez, Yomar Ortiz. Uh, but I'm also looking at those last two times that Yomar rode this horse, Tim. That's exactly what I have on my notes. Yeah, those last two races is that Yomar rode this horse October 16th and November uh, 1st. They were not bad efforts. They weren't great efforts, but they weren't bad. They were in the mix. 58 and 57 buyer speed figure. That's not too far off these horses. In fact, you could argue uh, that those two races are better uh, than a lot of the horses with the exception, uh, exception of Itaki's Verve right. as far as the figures go. Needs to get away from the gate. Doesn't always get away well, but interesting horse here. You're going to get a good price. One that I was surprised about last Last time out was the number four resident liberal. I rode that horse personally myself ages ago on the mud. He didn't want one single bit of it. He gets a fast track for the first time in a long time. And he run he doesn't run too bad, Tim. He doesn't run badly at all. I mean, this is this is a great move. You know, you get these turf horses to kind of hang around all all year. If you're gonna go back on the dirt, make it easy on them. Yep. And that's exactly what John Walters did last time. It's exactly what he's doing again uh, this afternoon. He 
will certainly, I believe, be looking for the lead uh, going to that first And he'll see, we'll see if he'll be able to handle it. Race number five is a maiden at 20 event going six furlongs on the dirt. Scratch in the five at Conjure. Tim, you land on the number eight who I have underneath on the mark for Hammy Smith. Angel Cruz, this is, this is your single on your early pick four, correct? He, he certainly is. I think he got a little late in debut. That was on November 13th. Come second time for Hammy Smith. We just saw a horse, uh, Celtic Cousin, just yes. get beat and should have never gotten beat, by the way, uh, the other day at 2-5, to five, uh, second time for Hammy Smith. This is the second time for Hammy Smith uh, this afternoon. He hits at about 18% with his second time starter. Comes in with two works uh, since that last race, including a sharp half and 48 flat, uh, 48 and a little bit of change here on December 5th. He gets, Yo he gets Angel Cruz this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I think that's an upgrade for sure. Nothing against Rodriguez, but Cruz just simply has more experience, right? Okay, right. let's move on. Uh, but I thought that was a good race. This horse comes back. He runs better this afternoon. He'll be able to sustain uh, that run all the way around. I like that. I like that, of course, as well. We both have the seven underneath. I just to the inside. Elusive image for Ricky Silliman gets Laura Lee Glazer. We know how well they team up together, uh, but got an improvement last time out, Tim. It was improvement last, uh, last time out. This horse is going to have to relax at the gate. He's been a little silly at the gate. He didn't get away well. He was fractious uh, back there in his last start. He's got to take a little bit of a deep breath, uh, but his most recent race was okay. It, 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 it certainly was. Excuse me for a second. I also am going to talk about, let's bring up, let's bring up your rail horse. Actually, the Barb's pride for Charlie Frog, because I saw this horse as a turf horse. Uh, how do you see the rail playing out for this one, for this new, not necessarily uh, new in the Charlie Frock barn, but uh, what piqued your interest on this one? Uh, did I use the one? Underneath. Oh, yeah, that's because yeah. of five scratch, because I had yes. the five, up, uh, the five scratch. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, just because they're going to send this horse, and maybe he can just <laughs> if he can get to the lead, I'm sure they're going to send this horse uh, from the fence, and maybe if he can get to the lead, uh, he might have a little shot there. I also include Imagine a Care for Dale Capuano, Carlos Lopez on top. Just kind of missed it. Just missed it last time out uh, and gets uh, stretches out from the five and a half to the six, and I think that's going to help out this one a little bit today. We'll be right back. We're going to go on a commercial break, and we'll be back to talk about the rest of Sunday's card. We're ready for the start. They're off. Here we go. I'm excited to see how this allowance race shakes down in the sixth, going six furlongs on the dirt. Let's just go ahead and take a look at Frightland, that video of Frightland right away. Your top selection, Tim, for uh, Brittany Russell gets Fergal Lynch again. That start. Yeah, look, it doesn't. Uh, this one doesn't get away. It's really messy uh, getting away from there. He was that was first off of a layoff. Uh, as you see, he didn't get away well. Then he stumbles. He's in the one hole. Now we're going to watch the first quarter of a mile. Yep. Uh, Fergal Lynch, he's a veteran rider. He knows the deal. What's he going to do here? Ch this horse normally shows some speed. Chase this horse up into a bad spot. He says, you know what? We're going to sit here. We're going to try to solve it, salvage what we can at the end. And we're going to save you for another yes. day. And that's exactly what's happening here. He makes a little bit of run into the stretch, but he doesn't ask him real hard. It was over right. like most of my days. It was over before it began. But look, this horse... I go, I'm going against a little bit of what I, I typically do because I do not like horses who don't get away. And you don't. this horse has a history of not getting away. But when he does get away, he's very, very good. As you see, two starts ago when he broke his maiden, ran a 76 by yep. speed figure and, and ran off and hid by a, uh, 11 lengths. Comes back here with a work sense. Second off the layoff, Brittany, very, very good. It's all about the break. If he gets away, he's 10 to 1 on the line. I'm never going to get that this afternoon. No. Not, on, not on a Brittany runner. No. But if he gets away, I think he's going to be very, very tough. I do. I was struggling to this put... This is a nice race. It, it, this is a very nice race. I, with all of... as you, I went six wide on my ticket in nice this ball. race. I could have gone with any of these horses on top. So I absolutely see the appeal in Frightland. But let's talk about... Uh, I'm just going to touch quickly on my Rock the Boat. I understand maybe why it's, it's easy to kind of say, eh, yeah, can we trust it? Sure. And 
while I don't love Robbie Bale's stats lately from turf to dirt, he's only one for 15 as of lately. This horse is coming first off the off of a little bit of a layoff, and that is what Robbie Bale's really gets good at. Currently, just off of a 17 entry sampling, four wins, five seconds, so just consistent throughout that. A decent uh, work going three quarters of a mile, but this horse is proven on a fast track, but again, I understand this is going to be a tough ask for him today. Well, look, he's in, he's in pretty good form. In fact, he's never delivered a bad race in right. his life. Lifetime best on the grass, first time off that layoff in the Maryland Million Turf sprint behind the next out winner and sky's, uh, sky's not falling. Here's another one. Got to get away. He's had yeah. some history of not yep. getting away from the gate. Absolutely. Let's both talk about the number six who we both have underneath Tober, Damon Deal DeVico, Angel Cruz. Consistency, such a consistent horse, uh, and gets a bit of a help with shortening of to back to the three quarters of a mile today. Uh, yeah, I agree, and I have that note. I, I like the t the turn back to three quarters of a mile this afternoon. Probably those two seven A series. Well, one was Maryland Million starter, and then the mm -hmm. first level allowance is what there was in the book and what uh, Damon had to d deal with. So right. I'm sure he's happy to get back to three quarters of a mile today. What I like about this horse is a couple things. How about he ran on the, comes off the layoff. He's in very, very good form. Goes from the turf to dirt and holds his form. His last two races were good. Were good, solid uh, numbers. As we mentioned, the distance is going to work into his favor. He's already proven he can convert his numbers from the turf to the dirt. Yeah, I, I really do like that angle on him. So I took, I just took a little bit more of a chance. I'll be surprised if he goes off at four to one. I think that was a bit. So I won't be surprised if that's a little bit lower. But let's dig in to the ten horse on the outside. Elusive agent gets shelled. And Russell again in the saddle. I'm a big fan of this horse. I've seen this horse just offer a lot of different ways he can win a race. Well, look, he didn't quite get the flow up front in his Correct. last race that he probably needs. Two starts back, he got that little bit of sharper pace up front, 22.45, and was able to run them down late. He is going to be coming late. I think he probably gets some flow this afternoon uh, up in front of him and can come with some finish. If he can come with that finish that he uh, came with on October 8th, uh, that is going to be uh, very, very good for him. I want to look at the uh, eight real quick, Young yes. Turk. I don't think we should sit on this horse at all. I know he's stepping up uh, this afternoon for, for John Robb, but he's run back-to-back -back lifetime best races, a big win in that two for 25 in his most recent start. What's your next step? And a other than he'll be well-placed early. He's going to supply a lot of that uh, pace uh, that elusive agent is going to be going to need. But there's a horse that can keep, uh, might be able to keep on going. There's so many horses that you should not be sleeping on yes. in here. Uh, Jerry Robb. Uh, you, we just it, this is the kind of move that Jerry Robb excels at. He know that we're talking about a trainer who knows when to move horses up to a certain level when it's appropriate, especially in an uh, in an under the radar move like this. Absolutely. So Tim, we could keep talking about this race, but you go four six ten eight. I go nine ten four six in that really exciting uh, allowance race that we have in the six race number seven is a claiming twelve five for the girls two year old, two year olds going six furlong scratch in the number seven. And we both land on the number two, Bayless Street, which was my first selection anyway for Jerry Robb and Xavier Perez. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's Jerry Robb and Xavier Perez, mm -hmm. second off uh, this type of layoff. Jerry Robb, 38%. That's insane. <laughs> uh, and that was a good return in that race, running third, getting beat uh, two and a half lengths that day, returns right back at this level. It's no question. No question. Very simple. We both go also with O'Shaughnessy with the rail horse for Brittany Russell gets JV in Toledo. Probably going to try to go for the lead again, do you think, Tim? No choice. I, I yeah, mean, no choice, yes. No choice, and you're going to have Xavier right there on – on your outside who's not going to probably make it easy on you and going to no. press you is going I'm, to press you at worst is going to really really challenge uh, uh you know press you at best and really really challenge at worst but this was a beaten favorite in his most recent start gets probably a little class relief here but is going to have to use his speed for Brittany Russell and that's what and I looked at this horse on the rail and then I saw Xavier just right next to this horse and I just immediately said oh Xavier is not uh, Xavier's going to be given some really heavy pressure on this horse today. So we both have the four, five underneath, Alas and Alack, Hammy Smith, Jaime Rodriguez. I like this combination. Uh, this one getting, once the light switch went on, got a little bit more consistent, Tim. The three quarters of a mile might work in his favor too. He's run five and a half in his last two starts. 
it might allow him to lay a little bit closer, and mm -hmm. if he can still come with a little bit of run, uh, he might get a little bit better result this afternoon. Absolutely. You also have the eight underneath ride, the Rapids. This one I was fighting on my ticket or not, so it was either the five or the eight. Dale Capuano gets Carlos Lopez today, just needs to get out of the gate. Look, he's well entered today. Broke his maiden for the maiden 30. Now, he was a desperate maiden breaker that day, right. only by a nose. They try the open 40, too tough. Gets back down to this 12-5 level. Very, very well entered for Dale Capuano, so going to be dangerous. A nice a nice little uh, race there in race number seven. Race number eight is an allowance optional 62-5. Going five and a half for the two-year-olds. Let's take a look right away at the one you I have underneath. You have on top lost weekend. Gets an outside position for Dale Capuano and Carlos Lopez. Yeah, best bet of the day. This is Marilyn Million, and they, he was well regarded. In this race, he was two Oof. and a half to one in a big Maryland Million Nursery field, but he just gets hammered oh, out of there. That's no shot. Uh, Carlos Lopez almost buys a little bit of real estate there, but he manages to hang on. But this horse makes a pretty nice run. You're going to pick this up uh, just outside the quarter pole. As you see, he's starting to move through. Now he's moved up here on the fence. Now he's had to do a lot of work uh, uh, yeah. to get there, and he's been taking the worst of it the whole way, but he keeps on trying. He digs in, he digs in, he digs in. We know that's a nice horse going to win this race, right? Johnny Z from Albany. Ever hear of him? He's a nice horse. But this horse on the fence, he keeps on trying. He gets a little late. He's given up here a little late. He had a horses that had a little bit more gas in the end. But that was a big effort. He's coming back here off of a short, a short break, which Dale excels with about, uh, what, a 20%. Three very, very good works. An outside draw. Last weekend should be very tough. To On top of that, a gate work. His last yep. work was a gate work leading up into this oh, wow. race. So that's I, that's a great indicator yeah. and a great trainer move yeah. right there. That's why Dale's won 3,500 races. He knows we better get this one back to the gate. Yep. Make sure he's confident and getting away from there. Right. 49 and change, 15 to 35 that morning uh, from the barrier. That's confident. You were you worded it great. Uh, getting that horse confidence back because that was a rough hit to the shoulder. That was a rough hit to the shoulder last time out. So you do you need to help that out. How about the George Weaver horse? On the rail, Chiringo. Fergal Lynch, of course, gets the call whenever George Weaver comes into town, but transferring over to the dirt uh, from breaking the maiden on the turf. Yeah, look, this might work. Uh, this this might be what this horse really wants is sure. the main track uh, by Boltior of a street boss uh, mare. It, it's turf, doesn't bleed turf, does it? It's worked well on the main track, has run some good strong figures. If he can run back to that last race, that number where he got beat three lengths, uh, which was in a stake, at a, at an overnight stake in Aqueduct, but still a right, stake, right. he could be very, very tough. And, of course, the main special weight race uh, was a good win when breaking his maiden. Also a decent work on the off uh, on a muddy track up there yep. at the training track and we have a track with moisture in it today so this horse could be okay on this distance today yeah it could be but going to one hole going to have to get away he's got yep. a couple races on his form where he didn't get away the best always wanted to point that out you have the also the number four underneath prove right for james chapman jerry j ron barbosa gets the call uh they're pr probably going to try and take the lead on this one well yeah i mean you, you always got to kind of watch out for a horse that gets back in amongst his friends right. he's back in a first level allowance race the nashua wasn't a bad effort at all in a short field. He runs third to five. He gets me two and a half lengths. Uh, comes back in the Remsen going mile and eighth. No good. He gets back to sprinting where he has run uh, pretty okay and he gets back to this first level allowance condition. You also go back to when he was at Timonium. It was a half mile, but he was still running in Maryland and that went very, very well. So I could definitely, the, I just really picked that up about this horse. What do you have against my three horse? Arby's the boss for Damon Deal, DeVico, Angel Cruz. I could see it didn't get the best break last time out. So I can see maybe why you're a little bit weary about him. Wow, where should I start? No, actually, uh, this could have been a miss for me. There's no doubt about that. Uh, did get beat 11 lengths in his most recent start, but it was behind Prince of Jericho. We know that horse can run a little bit. He mm -hmm. ran off and hide, hid that day. A next out winner of Valencia Day uh, ran second, came back uh, to win. The previous starts, look, they were all good, solid efforts. 
you know, he's never really thrown a bad one in the last race yet, and he had an excuse. So, yeah, this could have been a miss. I have nothing really that strongly against him oh, at all. What about uh, your horse underneath Swiftly? Devil gets the blinkers on for Michael Gorm, which has been working mm -hmm. for him as of lately. Yeah, watch out for Mikey Gorman. He's been kind of warming up here. He's he gotten has. back here to Maryland. He's got a few runners stabled back down here for the winter. He only comes to see us uh, during the winter, but the <laughs> blinkers go on. He hits at about 20%. Uh, and I understand why. That was a very boring, non-exciting well effort yes. <laughs> in his last start. Mike goes, you know what? We need to do something here. Uh, bring your brain back around, uh, back around. Also, and to take into consideration, that was a f uh, he ran without Lasix that day. He's going to have to run without Lasix this mm -hmm. afternoon. So maybe the blinkers be enough to, to sharpen him up. And Mikey's starting to warm up. In that optional 62.5, Tim Tullett goes 7146, and I go 3714. Race number nine, our last race of the weekend, is a maiden claiming 20, going seven furlongs on the dirt. We both land on Haley B. The Brittany Russell runner gets JV in Toledo in the saddle today. Yeah, how can you not? I yeah, mean, he's just, <laughs> yes. He's, just, he's three to five in line. I mean, <laughs> you just you just have to. 67 buyer speed figure when last time on the main track, that was this past July at uh, Delaware Park. Tried the turf here. That wasn't a terrible effort, but uh, drops in class this afternoon. Gets back onto the main track. Has been working uh, well enough for the return right. here. And so you can't get around this horse. No, 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 you just can't. That Delaware run, two back main special weight, that's a bit of a, la a, bit of a lateral move of what's going on in this, uh, what she's up against in this field here today. So that's where I see it. We both land on the number two underneath. Excuse for my scrolling. Tap and glow for Ricky Silliman gets Charlie Marquez today. Yeah, the recent race has been okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong uh, with those races, but uh, man, poor Ricky Silliman. He claims this one off Brittany for 12-5. Horse, do you take out uh, Brittany's horse who she dropped down on his head? This horse right. looks pretty good. <laughs> yes. It's just uh, that's just the way the game works from time to time. But mm -hmm. uh, been in uh, been in good form over her last uh, over her last uh, three races. So yeah, I mean she's. I mean, she's going to have to be better, and if uh, Brittany's horse doesn't show up, Haley B doesn't show up, then she's going to be right right where she needs to be. Why not? We both go also with the four underneath, Milady Thatcher, Lacey Gotti gets the blinkers off, and J. Ron Barbosa, J. Ron Barbosa, I don't think has ridden for Lacey uh, quite yet. I, I just see in my entries that I don't, I don't, I think this is the first ride for J. Ron and Lacey teaming up together. Well, if she dropping in class. Uh, and uh, turning back to seven eighths of a mile, last race was mile sixteenth. That didn't work. The last race was on the race before that was on the turf. That didn't work. But if you go back, June uh, this past June, uh, this affiliate ran two good races in a row with uh, decent figures, fifty two uh, while breaking her maiden, going seven eighths of a mile under Rosado. Comes back and runs a pretty uh, gets DQ'd, mm -hmm. uh, but she doesn't know that. Comes back and runs another decent race while sprinting on the main track. So that, those are the races I'm leaning on a little bit. Absolutely. I also include the Harpster. Uh, just in Hammy Smith, one that I can definitely see improving. Uh, just I'm looking for a price in that race, and I think I found it in the Harpster. So Tim Tollett goes 9264. I go 9214. And we have you all warmed up for the races here on Sunday, and we're going to head over to Dave Rodman for changes and scratches. Good luck.